Alrighty then, so in this video we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to put together a a model that's gonna start with a sketch picture. A sketch picture gives you the opportunity of taking something that's kinda complex geometry and uh being able to accurately measure that and put that into your SolidWorks model. So if you take a look at this, what it is, I took a picture of we're gonna start with the picture here and talk about that. It's a little bit blurry, it's not quite level, but that's okay because we could fix this in SolidWorks. But um, what we did, what I did, is I took this, uh, you, know, you know, this old dispenser of uh, tape, and uh, we're going to create a model of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the picture itself, and what you want to do is, uh, with that picture, you want to be able to measure something on this picture that you know a distance on. So I know what the distance is between on the bottom here. It's just, you know, it's about six inches. So it works out really well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, picture, we're going to insert that into SolidWorks, into the background before we sketch. So it's going to be like a picture within the sketch, within uh, the feature we're going to eventually uh, develop. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But uh, before we do that, you want to make sure that when you take a picture of this, you take a picture of whatever you're going to be sketching, whether it be a tennis racket or a car or this thing, you want to, you want to be able to step back from it. You don't want to get really close to it. Because it's going to get distorted. You want as uh, you know as much in a way a parallel lines of sight that you can. So what you do is you step back from it by a few feet, maybe five or six feet. Take your telephoto and zoom in on this so that it kind of fills up the image as best you can. And if it's like in a car, you probably want to step back even further because you want to make sure that if you look at a car from a distance, you want to make sure the wheels are kind of parallel so that uh, if you're looking at the both front wheels, if you're looking at the car from the side, if the two front wheels are kind of, you know, one's going to be right behind the other. Same with the boot, uh, two back wheels. And if you can think about this, if you just visualize this, if you got really close to the car, you know that the front wheels in the front are going to appear a little bit further apart from each other than the ones in the back. So you're better off if you step back from this, got the telephoto out, filled your image with that telephoto, and, uh, you know, got your picture that way. Also want to make sure you have uh, plenty of light back here. And if you were to do auto trace, you really want to have high contrast. You want to cut out all this other stuff that's in here, including the chair and the wall. You want to have like a stark white background to do that. But you don't necessarily need to do that in a situation like this. So what we're going to do, and you want to, yeah, again, you want to make sure you have plenty of light in here. You don't want it dark. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this picture we're gonna, yeah, that, I, that I created. You're going to create one of, of your own. And we're going to insert that in SolidWorks. Uh, they're, they're, they're going to give you a uh, measuring tool, and we're going to go ahead and balance that. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, level this out a little bit, and we're going to put that in the background. Now, for something like this tape dispenser, it probably would be a good idea with a sketch picture to take a picture of the side. But the front over here, the back over here, and the top and maybe the bottom too. The bottom is probably fairly straightforward once you get the back and the top because it kind of bulges out here. Kind of comes out to a bulge out here and then kind of tapers back towards the back of the dispenser. You also want to consider your orientation. I would consider this over here uh, to be the front. We're looking at it from this direction. That would be the front. And then this would be the right side of the dispenser. So we're going to consider that when we put this together in SolidWorks. So remember when you take the picture, far away, telephoto, plenty of light. Provide yourself with a, a white background back here if you can. And next step is we're going to insert that into SolidWorks. Okay, so let's, let's put that picture in here. What we want to do, again, we want to consider the plane we're going to be sketching on. I'm going to consider the right plane. So we're going to go up here to Sketch and enter that. And then we're going to go ahead and click on Sketch Picture, which is over here on the right end. Oh, oh my God, where is it? So it's not here. So what do you do? This is what you do. Um, we have a, a lot of the sketch elements up here that are available for as sketch tools, but not everyone. And if you're missing some in here, you can go ahead and grab those. So what you do is you right-click in the Command Manager, and you go, we're going to go to Customize, and we're going to go over here to Command. So we're looking for Commands, and we're going to be looking for the Sketch Picture. So we're going to be looking for Sketch Commands, which is going to be over here. Go ahead and click on that, and this is Sketch Picture. Temporarily, you just want to drag that up here and put that onto your... Uh, under your command manager under the sketch tab. As an alternative to that, we can go in here and actually search for it. Before we search for it, you want to make sure we're searching for tools. Remember, Mark Snyder uh, demonstrated this at SolidWorks World. But we're going to go ahead and uh, search for picture, just P I C T U R E, and see what we got. Let's go ahead and search for that. And yeah, it's the only thing that's got picture associated with it, and it's going to be sketch picture. So you can actually do the same thing over here and drag that out over here. Now now we have two. 
don't really need to, so we're going to go ahead and take one and we're going to uh, delete that. So we can't just uh, go up there and delete it, but you have to right click on it and go to customize. Oh, not large buttons. What is that? So let's, uh, yeah, let's go do this. Do this. We're going to customize and we're going to take one of those and just delete it. So, oh, commands. It's going to take one of those and just drag that off. We can't delete it, but we drag it off. And there we go. So that was kind of long. So we're going to go to sketch picture. We're going to put that in. We want to make sure you grab the picture of your choosing. You want to find a location for that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my uh, folder in here. And I'm going to go to Dell up here. Go to that folder up here. This is my uh, video folder. And this one is going to be in uh, the how-to section. So, you know, wherever yours is, you want to make sure you find it in there. So that's where mine is. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And it's going to drop that into place. I'm going to think about that for a few minutes. But oh, there it goes, white screen. I hear a crash come in. There we go. It's like a really big picture, but you can scroll out and kind of get that oriented. So we're going to scale that picture down by quite a bit. So we're going to take this, uh, and it's called a, um, a scale tool. If you unclick that, it disappears. But if you click it back on, it's, it's kind of handy. It's a little clunky, but it's kind of handy. What we're going to do is we're going to take that, we're going to put that, 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 Thing. Even though it's got the you know, like the move symbol to it, not going to really move for us. But let's go ahead and put the origin down here in the corner. That's where we're going to start. But what you can move are going to be these ends. This is probably the easiest end to move right now. We're going to put that like on the origin, and you notice it's not uh, fully. Uh, it's not uh, you know it's not level. The picture isn't level. But we're going to level that here in a bit. Then we're going to take this part over here and drag that over here like that. Get it kind of close. Doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to drop that in place, and then it's going to pop up a dimension dialog. And right now it says it's 33 inches, but we're really going to make that 6 inches, so we're going to type in 6. So what it does is it automatically just scales the picture. So now the picture is about a, you know, about a third, maybe a fifth, 20% of what it was before. Makes the file a little bit smaller. If you want to make this even smaller, you can crop that picture if you want to do that, but that's probably a little bit more unnecessary work. But uh, now let's go ahead and level this. So now we have the capacity to come out here and level it. We can move the position over here if we want to do that. Or we can change the angle on it. So we're going to change the angle to like maybe one. And move that over. We're going to go ahead and take this guy over here. We're going to make that uh, change head again. We're going to go to that uh, button over here and move that into place. So it just disappeared. Where did that thing go? This is what I mean by clunky. Up. Oh, now, it's, now it's really gone. Let's do Control Z a couple times, see if we can get that back. There it is. All right, so we're going to click on that. And, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to our picture. Let's right click on our picture and uh, go, go back into that sketch. I guess I'm out of that sketch. you got to be careful. If you fuss with this too much, it's going to fuss back at you. So let's go ahead and rebuild that. Go back into our sketch. Right click on our sketch. Go back into sketch picture which we have over here. And I don't know if we can do much more of that. It looks like it's, uh, okay, it's still there. So we're going to get that preview, uh, kind of a white preview now of a horizontal relationship in there. So let's go ahead and consider that. And we can actually dimension that too. So I think if we popped a dimension in there. Uh, we can get that uh, working between these two points. Up. Oh. There we go, getting clunky on us. Let's go back in our sketch picture. Let's go ahead and uh, edit that too. Maybe we can double click on that. Boy, that's just not being very friendly here. Let's do this. Let's just like not do that anymore. Oh, there is a there is a dimension. So if you just click on it, then we get our dimension in there. So we want to make that six, but we still have to scale the picture. You know what? This is what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of that, and we're just going to sketch a line out. Here's the alternative to that. Let's go ahead and take a center line. We're going to sketch that out. We're going to put in our own line because we have a little bit more control on that. We're going to make that six inches from the end. We're going to, and that's going to be very similar to where that other thing is, where that sketched, uh, where that uh, measurement tool is. See if we can get rid of that, or let's just let's just take that thing and move that out of the way. So there we go. Get out of here. We don't want you anymore. We're going to make that six, and now we need to scale our picture. So this is what you do. It's kind of manual to do that, but we're going to go ahead and uh, scoot that down a little bit. We can take these endpoints over here and actually move those in. Come on. Let me do it. So let's unenable the sketch tool. 
Let's go ahead and uh, double click on that and move the endpoints in here. There we go. Now we can do that. So this is the old fashioned way. Sometimes it works a little bit better. What you want to do is kind of scale that back and forth until you get that relatively close. I know they tried with the sketch tool to make that a little bit more friendly, but I think there needs to be a little bit more work done on that to make that a little bit more friendly. So now we're going to go ahead and go to, just like we did before, with that enable sketch tool, we're going to change uh, you know, the rotation on that. So about one degree seems to be about right. So once you do that, once you get that oriented in there, put that into place, and maybe one and a half would be good, so I'm going to type a 1.5, rotate that just a little bit more. That's how you do that. That's how you scale that up and down, back and forth, to get that in place. Once you do that, go to the green check mark. Now it's ready to go. So the sketch picture is embedded in our sketch number one. And I think if we go ahead and rebuild that, now you can see that gray line in the background. It shows us uh, the start of that sketch. And now we can begin to sketch on top of that by using a series of lines and arcs, and maybe even style splines too. Okay, so that's in place. Our sketch pictures in the background. Now we can right-click on our sketch, just like we did before. We're going to go ahead and make uh, some modifications to that sketch. So we could take this instead of a center line, we could actually turn that into a model line if we want to do that, and uh, just continue sketching. So the nice thing about this, we don't need to know these other dimensions. We just need to sketch right on top of that in order to get a form that we think might be appropriate for this. So we can take a line, probably go almost uh, vertical with that, go over here and go back to an arc and get that arc into place. And then we're going to go ahead and take another line over here and sketch this over here. And then maybe a big broad arc over here from that point. And you got to think about uh, what we're doing over here too. So we have that cut in here. We're going to go about halfway in here. And uh, I'm going to put a center line in here too at this point. Because that's going to denote, uh, you know, the very, kind of like the middle of that in a way. But it's a, a point of inflection where you have, a, it's kind of bulging out here. Comes to a peak over here, if you think about the right plane we're on. And over here on the top, it's going to bulge out over here too. That's where its peak is going to be, and then it's going to come down the other side. So probably maybe a tangent arc from this point. Kind of come down here like that. It looks like it goes straight at that point. So let's go ahead and go back to line. Bring that line in here, and then we can, with that line in place, go back to where the origin of that uh, line is, put in that arc, bring this back down over here, and maybe over here, bring in an arc, which defines that corner. And we probably have an arc over here, too, so let's do that. So this is already a corner in here, but let's go ahead and put in a, a fillet. So that fillet is probably going to be a little bit long, or a little bit short, so maybe 0.2 would be good. So go to the green chalk mark over there. We're going to make this corner over here and that fillet. We're going to make those equal to each other. So let's go ahead and with a control key, we're going to select both of those uh, together at the same time. We're going to make those equal. Let's go ahead and go down here. We're going to take uh, these, this uh, line and that line over here, that arc and that line. Let's go ahead and make those tangent. And over here, it might be a good idea maybe to turn that back into construction geometry so we don't have to terminate that. So that line's always there. It's always going to have that 6-inch dimension. Let's go ahead and take these endpoints of those two arcs and connect that with the model line. That way we still have that in place. So now it's just a matter of uh, putting in the appropriate sketch relations in here. These two you might make tangent. You can move that around a little bit so it kind of conforms with what we have in there, what we see in the picture. Just kind of move that around. Everything else looks pretty good. That arc in this line probably should be tangent too, so let's go ahead and put that into place. This one, maybe move that out a little bit so it kind of conforms to the picture. So again, it's, uh, it may not seem important initially, but you want to make sure you get that picture balanced and get that rotated uh, correctly. And once you do that, now you can start putting in dimensions. So we're going to go between that line and this line. Uh, we want to make sure it's uh, put a degree on that. So one of these lines is not vertical. So let's go ahead and take that line and maybe make that vertical. See if that works. Actually, it doesn't work. Looks like I'm, it's going to be more at an angle. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and put a, an angle dimension in there. Make sure that when you do this, you round it up. You don't want to have a bunch of digits after the decimal in here. So we're going to make that just a plain old 87 uh, degrees. And now we can go ahead and uh, begin to uh, put this together. So you can see what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to add additional sketch relations in here. We're going to add in uh, some dimensions to make sure this all comes together. Now let's do this. With that angle and that uh, arc down here with uh, those two arcs, let's go ahead and make those equal. This one and that one down here are reference one, the one that's only dimension. Let's go ahead and make those equal in here. And then again, we still have some flexibility. We don't have that fully defined, which is okay. 
to where we want to be. And then we're going to go ahead and move this out. And I think you get to just what we're doing here. So a series of additional uh, dimensions in here, like between that point and this line. And uh, these uh, arcs in here are already defined. That's going to be tangent up here. I think uh, we should be able to get all this together. So a few more dimensions, and that's going to be done. And what you do when you're finally done with this is you do your extrude, you do your uh, you know your base uh, feature in here. Uh, probably going to be extruded uh, boss base. We could also do uh, use this for revolve features too. But this is how you put it together. This is how you put in a uh, sketch picture, and how you can sketch right on top of that and get something that it's fairly accurate to what you're trying to achieve, especially on an object like this, or maybe something that's round, like a, a pitcher or a wine glass, where it's really hard to uh, define by uh, basic measurement tools. This gives you a good way of doing that. Okay, so I'm back. So somebody asked me, like, how, how do you finish this model? I'll show us how to, how to get all these lines black to get a fully defined sketch. Well, I, I guess it's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, because uh, it may not be as uh, apparent uh, to do that and what you need to do. So it's going to be a series of adding sketch relations in here, like uh, a couple of these uh, tangent relationships that, we're, that we have missing, and uh, putting in some dimensions, like angular dimensions and radius dimensions, in order to get this fully defined. And we're also going to have to take the, the image itself and maybe manipulate that a little bit to make sure it still fits our model. What's not going to change in here is going to be the 6-inch dimension on the bottom. We want to keep that. So we're going to actually make the picture conform to that line if we need to, if it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit uh, too small. And we're going to put in all those uh, relationships in here in order to make sure, and the dimensions too, to make sure that our sketches conform to the image that we see in the background. So one thing to consider as we go over across the top here, you can see we have a flat surface up here. Kind of goes into a couple different arcs over here. I have two arcs, so one's a little bit broad, one's a little bit more narrow in here. But we also have a cut in here for the tape. So it may not uh, look like I'm actually conforming to that edge, but you can see that cut coming in. And I'm going to go ahead and try to interpret what that edge might look like on the other side that, that we don't see. Or what it might have looked like before they actually put in that cut. So let's start on the left and keep uh, maybe uh, move over to the right, see what we need to do. Let's go ahead and put in some uh, sketch relations in here. We know that's got to be tangent. And this looks like it's getting a little bit beyond, or maybe just slightly, uh, our edge of our uh, picture. So we're going to pull that down. And this line is already vertical, so we're going to go ahead and put in, uh, perhaps, an angular dimension. So we're going to go between that line up here, and to be consistent, we're going to go ahead and uh, go uh, amongst our best reference that we have in here, which is going to be on that bottom line. We're going to make that about 15 degrees. So not fully defined yet. Uh, we can go ahead and take this uh, arc over here, make that equal to that arc in here. So we're going to make that equal. And not fully defined yet in here either, but you notice that that got really small. So let's go ahead and take that line. We still have some blue. We have some flexibility in here. Let's go ahead and drag that up a little bit. And it looks like we're a little bit off our model, too. So we can double-click on that uh, sketch picture in the background and kind of move that on, into place. And it looks like it's exceeding over here, too. So we're going to do that a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and shrink down our sketch picture. So not fully defined yet, what do we need to do? If we were to tug on some of these endpoints and kind of pull that around and see what we need to do, now we have a height dimension in there. We're going to go to Control-Z, get back to the form that we had before. And what we really like to do is we want to put a height dimension between this and that arc in here. But we have two different choices. We can go between this uh, line or establish a six inch line in here. Go to that point or this point. None of those are right. None of those are satisfactory. So how do we get a point in there that's going to be consistent or coincident with both of these lines? Well, well, let me show you. If we do this, we can click on this line and that line. And do uh, with the control key selected, uh, select both of those lines and go up here to point. doesn't put a point in there, but it puts in a crosshairs of which we can select the center. And that's called a virtual sharp. Virtual sharp means it's going to be the sharp corner between the intersection of these two lines. And it's something we could actually dimension to. So now we can go to smart dimension. We're going to click on that virtual sharp in here. And we're going to click on this line in here. We're going to uh, establish a height dimension. Always round this. Don't have those run on dimensions, those look ugly. So we're going to type in 1.6. Mix it up a little bit, you can make that 1.55 perhaps, but I think that's pretty good. So that gets uh, that part black. This part up here, that's pretty close. We want to put in a um, 
get out of our dimension there. You can see that uh, symbol next to the cursor. We're going to make those uh, tangent to each other. And maybe pull that down a little bit, stretch out a little bit. And I'm going to take this center line and move that over here. Get that right back in the middle. So that actually uh, looks pretty close. Let's go ahead and put a distance dimension between this line and that line over here and kind of get that, uh, you know, kind of solidified. 3.6 over here too, maybe? 3.39? 3.5? Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. That's pretty close. Maybe 3.55 or 3.6 would be good. I think that's a little bit better. And then we can probably put a dimension on this arc too. Uh, maybe 5.5. Maybe a dimension on that arc over here too, or what might be better would be uh, again an angular dimension between this line over here and that arc over there. Looks like about 12 degrees. Might might be good. That looks uh, good so far. And we also have a uh, sketch relation in here too between those two, that arc and that uh, that line. And we're also going to be taking that arc over here and make that equal to our reference arc down here. We're going to make those equal too, so we don't have a bunch of dimensions kicking around. Not fully defined. But we could take that uh, line over here, maybe stretch that over here a little bit, maybe bring this down. We also want to have that virtual sharp in here, so let's go ahead and establish that. And uh, yeah, one, down, one thing down here too is we also want to make sure that the virtual sharp off this line is going to conform to that point down here. Remember, that's a good line. That's going to be six inches. We want to make sure that the bottom of our uh, tape dispenser is going to be six inches too. So again, the virtual sharp again, we're going to go ahead and click on this line, that line, and we're going to go up here to point. It's going to put that into place, and we're going to take this point in here, and that point, we're going to make that coincident. So it's definitely a, a corner that we want. Let's go ahead and move that in a little bit, grab that end point. We're going to make sure, even though it's not right on top of that, we want to make sure that this line is kind of parallel, parallel to that line. So let's go ahead and uh, it's actually going to be parallel to the edge of the tape dispenser as we see in the image. Let's go ahead and put in a dimension in there, 86.77, maybe 86.8. Kind of gets that close. So this might be a point in time where we want to take our sketch picture, just manipulate that a little bit, maybe make that just slightly smaller. So what you do is you double click on that, take one of these endpoints, kind of stretch that down a little bit and see if that uh, helps uh, fit the model. It kind of moved it a little bit, but we can actually move that back, kind of recenter that. And actually, just, you know, it's a little bit of iteration in here, but it looks like we got that really close. Maybe up a little bit, maybe down a little bit. Again, what you do is you take some of these endpoints in here and move that. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. So we're going to exit, sketch picture out of our properties manager. Kind of make a uh, last uh, few mo uh, movements of these lines. We're going to move this line up a little bit if we can. Take that point and move that. It's not going to let us do let us do that very easily, but we can take that arc and move that. End points are usually easier to move than um, than lines themselves or the arcs. So now we did need to define this a little bit better. So we have that tangent relationship in here. We have a tangent relationship in here. We have that uh, 12 degree dimension. Maybe we need to put a radius dimension on this. Maybe two or 1.8. Once we do that, now it's black and it's fully defined. Now we can uh, go ahead and extrude that. And I think I'm measuring it as we speak. The extrusion is going to be two and a half inches right there in the middle. Again, it kind of bulges in the middle. But if you go to Features, Extruded Boss Space, Midplane Extrusion, of course. And we're going to uh, make that 2.5 inches. And that shows you, uh, you know, the very beginning of that tape dispenser. So now that that sketch is suppressed in the background, not really suppressed, but it's hidden. And the sketch picture is hidden too. If the sketch uh, is uh, hidden, the uh, sketch picture is hidden too. But we can right click on this sketch picture. If we were to go back into that sketch and actually open up that sketch, the sketch picture comes back because they're kind of related to each other. We made that connection in there. And I don't think we can uh, hide that right now. But definitely, if you want to rebuild that and put that uh, sketch in the background, the sketch picture uh, disappears too. So I'm not going to go ahead and finish modeling this, but maybe the next step would be to go ahead and trim the sides. So it's uh, kind of uh, peaks out over here on the right and the left side. And we can do that off the top plane to do that. But that gives you a start. That shows you how to use Sketch Picture to get fairly accurate measurements on your model. So you can begin with the sketch and begin to put in your base feature on the part you're trying to construct.